Hi folks, welcome to the week 12 kickoff for English 309. This will cover March 30th through April 5th. So let's get into the first reading, making usability findings actionable. And here's my first question. What are reports trying to persuade readers to do? Well, reports demand action. We want our readers to agree with us that there's a need for action, that we have things we can make better in terms of the usability or the overall performance of the product or, or document that we're working with. We want them to agree on the action that we recommend or a reasonable adaptation of it which fit, fits into the design framework. And finally, we want our audience to take action in a timely fashion. Here's what Shada says about that. If product teams don't know what to do with usability results, they'll simply ignore them. So we have to write reports that won't be ignored. Well, how do we do that? What are the criteria for a good test report? The reading specifies three. First, reports are informative. I think we all imagine this as the default status of reports. But reports also have to be persuasive. Readers respond by taking the actions outlined in the report or adapting the advice that we give, as we just talked about. And finally, reports have to be usable. It's kind of funny that a usability report itself has to be usable, and this is what Shada calls meta-usability. But this makes sense. People aren't going to use the report if they can't get the information out of it efficiently and accurately. We have a framework for that, Quesenberry. So which of the five E's from Quesenberry are most relevant for writing usability testing reports? Here they are. Now, I'm not sure any of these are irrelevant for testing reports. I do think that, that the way you proportion the five E's will be a little bit different for each report. The one that would be the least relevant in an actual work situation is easy to learn because reports would be written every couple of months or every month, depending upon how spread out your testing was. So people that were working with the reports would get used to them over time. My next question, how does the Shada article exemplify informative, persuasive, and usable reporting? Well, the article serves as its own example. It's short, 1300 words, only about five minutes to read. It begins with a summary and uses subheads for organization. It's full of specific examples, and both the end and the beginning of the article point to the previous and the next steps that you can take as a reporter. Now, Shada gives you five suggestions, and these are five of the six subheads in her article. Be specific, don't blame the user, look for the bigger picture, help identify solutions, and organize and rank your findings. Let's go through all five of these briefly. First, be specific. You notice the first bullet here is pr has two options. Registration was hard, very short. But the second part, the button to register for the site had poor color contrast and faded into the page background. That's much better. Give that level of detail if you can in your testing report. Second, don't blame the user. This should be familiar to you. We want to talk about the product being tested, not the successes and the failures of participants. Number three, look for the bigger picture. This might be a challenge for us given the framework of the course and the limited amount of testing that we're doing. But again, do your best. 
In a real work situation, one key part of this would be thinking about the user and the task analysis that you do, and if you're using other experience methods like personas, talking about how those influenced what you were doing in the test report. One way to build credibility with your audience is remarking on ways that you would change or modify those or including them in the report itself. Number four and number five, identify solutions and organize and rank your findings. Now identifying solutions is a balance between giving someone an idea and giving someone an entire redesigned document. We don't want to do that second part, give somebody the redesign, because frankly, designers aren't going to be interested in you doing your job for them. This is one reason that Shada recommends you invite team members to participate in the usability tests and participate in the debrief as well. Now step five, ranking findings as low, medium, or high severity works in two ways. If there's a really big problem, they might want to spend a lot of, uh, a lot of time on that problem immediately and start trying to fix it right away. However, the first problems you tackle might be the easiest. So the low, medium, and high can be used in a couple different ways. Now, where have you heard some of these suggestions before? That's right, Uncle Steve. So one thing you can do as you write your test reports is go back to Rocket Surgery Made Easy because it's going to help you not just with testing methods, but the way you write up the results. Now, I don't have as much to say about the second article because there is some overlap between them, but let's spend a few minutes on reporting usability test results. There are three parts of the article, and the last one is going to be the most useful for us. The first part, data analysis, is going to be more useful in the long term because it speaks to organizing data. Now, you don't have a ton of data, so it's not going to help you that much. The second part echoes Shada in quite a bit and doesn't add a whole lot of depth. So let's get to that third part. How can you use the key part of the article to shape your report? Well, you should steal the headings and make them the four sections of your report. The background summary should provide the necessary context. The methodology is really the methods, a description of the way you did your testing and analysis. This will help the people you're working with understand what you were doing and reproduce all or part of your testing if they want to. The results se section is the data, the information itself, what actually happened in the testing sections. And the last session, the findings and recommendations, is you interpreting the results, making recommendations about the next steps for the rest of the design team. Now, what guidance do we get from the article about displaying information in your report. Use visuals whenever you can. And I think these guidelines apply not just to usability test reports, but to lots of different types of reports. Tables can be used for data, especially when you're making comparisons between the different types of data in the same instances. Ordered lists make it easy to follow methods, read findings, and show structure. Screenshots or photos can help with results. And short video clips can offer a really in-depth look at what actually happened during the testing session. The key here is short. People don't want to watch a ton of video. And with that in mind, I'm going to end this week's kickoff here. Thanks for watching, and please get in touch if you have any questions.